Hello, I'm Michael Clark, your host for Meet the Farmer TV. Let's find out where we're going to get the next generation of farmers. Programs like Farm to School and School to Farm, some way to bring young children into the love of growing and becoming farmers. Let's talk to Dr. Kathleen Merrigan, the Deputy Secretary, and find out more of what's up about Farm to School and the next generation of farmers here on Meet the Farmer TV. You've been working for years, like decades, on, on environmental issues, and, and you were the, like the science advisor for Senator Leahy? I was indeed. Tell me, but tell now me about my that. issues are hip. It yeah. used to, I used to feel like it was an uphill battle, uh -huh. and now the interests around sustainability, local regional food systems, it's the rage. Yeah. I mean, local food is hot. It's one of the, the hottest trends, if maybe the hottest trend they've seen in decades in the food sector. My, my joke is, I used to go to parties and people say, what do you do for work? I say, I work in ag policy. And all of a sudden I'd be alone with my gin and tonic in a corner of the room. <laughs> now I say I work in ag policy and people say, cool, wow. tell me more about it. I want to learn more. So there's this opening of uh, a window now for a conversation about American agriculture that I haven't seen before in my professional life. That's great. It is really And we've got a hip president, so everybody's really hoping something's going to happen. And a hip first lady. I have never seen so many people so excited about fruits and vegetables. Yeah, and She's she has really, a garden. She has a garden. I've been there many times. She's really? doing a lot with that garden. And I was actually at the White House on St. Patrick's Day, and the Prime Minister of Ireland handed the first lady some shamrocks from Ireland for the garden. So it's, yeah. a, it's, it's got international buzz. That's terrific. Are we going to have farmers in the future, or are we just going to buy it all from China? Well, the average age of farmers in this country, farmers and ranchers, 57 years of age, and we have this huge upsurge of farmers over the age of 75, because we just don't, we're not growing young farmers in the way that we need to. And so it is a concern, and we think that we have to start educating kids at a really young age. So I'm very interested in farm to school. I'm also interested in school to farm. So you want to actually bring the schools to the farm and have the kids learn on site what, what growing food really is? Well, my own research uh, with my doctoral student at Tufts University, where I was before I came here, found that children who engaged in garden-based learning did better on standardized science tests, had better environmental awareness, and here's the kicker, had a greater willingness to try and actually consume fruits and vegetables. Mm. So it's not an add-on to the school day, an extra burden for a school to take on school gardens, for example. It's actually a benefit. And so bringing the agricultural experience into the school and also bringing kids out to the farm is really an exciting thing. I brought kids from inner city Boston out to a farm and I was so excited to show them where their food comes from. What was really interesting to me is some of these kids had never been on a highway before. Hmm. So the drive to the farm was exciting. We've got a lot of hills to climb. So there, you know, there's really a lot of science in the farming, especially here at Virginia State University. We've it's got hydroponics. University. We've got you know development on these mm -hmm. these plants, and these plants are headed to the High Tunnel Project, which is a special funding, uh, and that's Equip funds, right? Environmental Qualities Incentive Program, Equip. It's a program that's been around for a while since the 1996 Farm Bill, and different practices are cost shared with farmers. And this year, because of our strong interest in building local regional food systems, we added a practice that farmers could cost share for high tunnels, or in my part of the country we call them hoop houses. Mm -hmm. But away, these, these, these raspberry plants are going to go outside, and, and the farmer is going to be able to extend the season. So it can, the plant can deal with the, the cold weather, the tough mm -hmm. weather longer on. And that's going to help us keep local produce in our different areas around the country. It's a great new offering. Farmers have gone by droves to the local NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation Service offices, to get this cost share availability. That's pretty exciting. Now, what's going to happen when there's so many people looking for a little piece of that money? Is there going to be enough money there? Everybody seems to be a little nervous now about that. Well, there's never enough money, <laughs> and I think people are surprised. Some people are surprised at the popularity of this initiative. Um, I'm not surprised. And I think that um, the Congress has put a lot of money into conservation. Conservation pro programs are really important because we need to reward our farmers and ranchers for their stewardship. The urban resident needs to understand that our farmers and ranchers are land stewards and they need to be guided and helped and supported in those efforts. So I don't see our con 
conservation programs, even in tough budget times, being ratcheted down, I think that's the future. And so I'm not worried about that. Well, that's terrific. Well, it, it's really great to see that, that you and, and as a representative of the Department of Agriculture really recognize the importance of the future. It's been a real concern for a lot of farmers because growing houses was the only profitable thing to do with the land. Oh, I was on a farm up in um, Wisconsin on Friday last week. And it was a real struggle. The, uh, the, the land is about $7,000 an acre if it's in agriculture. And if, if farmers are willing to sell it to a developer, they're going to get $15,000 an mm. acre. So the question is, how do we get young people into farming? How do we preserve that farmland, given that kind of scenario? It's tough. And we, as a country, need to grapple with this. Not only people on the land, but also the folk that I work with at USDA, 50% of our employees, 5-0, 50%, half, become retirement eligible in the course of this administration. Mm. And so I'm wondering about succession planning, as we all, and I'm not speaking about anyone in particular, get gray hair, <laughs> who's that next generation is going to come in and fill our shoes? Yeah. Um, I want to get people excited about coming to work for the Department of Agriculture, the People's Department. It's a great place to be. That's really interesting that through growing plants, something we think of as just so basic, it actually improves math and science skills. It really does. And uh, I think we have a lot of USDA programs that are there to help. They may be exercised in different ways than they've been used before, but within statutory authority, within ex existing budgetary resources, we can do a lot. For example, the Farm Service Agency has a, a, a farm storage uh, facility loan program. Mm -hmm. You can use that for cold storage. A group of farmers, you, you can extend your season, you can make it easier to do farm to institution sales if you have cold storage availability. I don't know how much that program has been used that way in the past, but it's certainly there for the offing. So we have a lot of things like that, and part of my mission as deputy is to get the word out to various constituencies about these programs, these myriad of programs that we have that can help. And this is the year for the Child Nutrition Reauthorization Act. Uh -huh. um, the Congress is just this month in March dropped legislation in, so the the discussions are really beginning in a big way. And so we provide a lot of information about what a healthy diet is and how we can do better, both uh, to the president and to Congress. And how do you think we're gonna, we're gonna kinda tie this all together that, that it helps the SOLs and, and the kids in school to, to actually get them out to the farm and it's not just a, a, a pick a pumpkin field trip or something? Well, I think one of the things we need to do is develop more empirical data on the value of that experience. When um, our study was published in a peer-reviewed journal last year, I think it was one of six or seven such studies. Uh, I think instinctively we all believe that an experience in the garden makes a difference. Mm -hmm. An experience going to the farm makes a difference. Um, well, you and I believe that. I'm not sure everyone believes that. And sometimes you need data to back up your instincts. And so we have a pilot program on school gardens that's uh, about to be unveiled. And hopefully, we can contribute to the scientific literature and make the case stronger to the policymakers who ultimately decide the fate of these issues. Well, I guess the biggest thing is really just getting the kids excited about it, you know, to have them all so happy that, that, that they, they want to learn something. Absolutely. You know, everyone reads Old MacDonald had a farm. But yeah. reading and seeing and doing, very different levels of engagement. Yeah. So that's what you're really working on is trying to engage the kids then. That's one of the many things I do as deputy, but it's not least among them. Well, our focus really is on rural development, revitalizing rural communities, growing domestic markets for farmers and ranchers. That's what we talk about. We talk about the the flight out of rural America, the economic times have been really hard in rural America for years, um, decades really, and um, per, per capita income is lower. So we see the local regional thing um, as a way to, to revitalize rural communities. So we're not so much talking about national security, I know some people do, but when I'm on the beat with Secretary Vilsack, that's our uh -huh. real focus. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for this interview. Yeah. And so at Virginia State University, we're committed to producing things in unique ways, uh, to, to make sure that food is accessible to local and regional audiences, and we really want to educate a new generation of people about agriculture. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank for you. Being you guys are doing State great University. stuff.
And uh, we appreciate Meet the Farmer TV and making those important connections with <laughs> folks across the state of Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. We need a focused strategy that will make a difference, particularly to young people, and make clear to them that there actually is a bold future in rural America for them and their children. The average age of farmers and ranchers in this country, 57 years of age. 30% decline of farmers under the age of uh, 25, 30% decline, and a 20% increase in the number of farmers over the age of 75. We need to find ways to ensure young people um, have the ability to take over production of the nation's food supply in the next half century. We've got to keep rural America strong, to keep agriculture strong, and keep the nation strong. We've created this new USDA initiative. I'm sure many of you have heard about Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food. You can say that the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative is a kind of toolkit for USDA. It holds many of the programs that USDA employees will discuss today. Like this conference, the initiative is practical and hardworking. And I'd like to give you an overview of this initiative, highlighting certain programs that hopefully are helping uh, Virginia farmers. So the, the, the initiative is really focused on um, reconnecting consumers with how their food is produced with the farmers and ranchers who grow their food. And not every family needs a, an accountant, not every family needs a lawyer, but every family needs a farmer. And then our tagline is, do you know yours? Really trying to facilitate ways to, to reconnect. We're also really focused on what people are eating. The, what I like to call the nutrition paradox, where we have you know, childhood obesity and we have childhood hunger. We have nearly 18% of children in this country are food insecure. And the obesity rate is all that, you know, we all know how bad that is. And there's no better spokesperson on this issue than our First Lady, Michelle Obama, whether she's hula hooping at the White House or planting in her garden um, or being on the cover of Newsweek magazine. She's an incredible force. Um, the Child Nutrition Reauthorization Act is this year. It's a big moment in time where we'll decide the dimensions of our school feeding programs and the Women, and, uh, Women Infant Children program, the WIC program. And one of the things that, that I'm really close to in that whole um, domain is the farm to school effort. Now, farm to school is a great idea. Great idea. Hard to do. And at the same time, when we talk farm to school, I always like to couple it with school to farm. So if we know that average Americans don't know enough about where their food comes from, we need to start getting at them really young. And I used to think, oh, this is a myth. People think their food comes from a grocery store. And then I worked in urban Chinatown in Boston, and I was working with third graders in a school in Chinatown. 80% of the kids were from families below the poverty line. And I started a garden-based curriculum in the school because our research found that children who have that experiential learning actually do better on their science scores and standardized tests because the third, fourth grade, it's a lot of it's about plant science. They had better understanding of environmental issues and their willingness to try and their actual consumption of fruits and vegetables increase. After um, we sort of unveiled the Know Your Farmer initiative in September last year and I immediately got an email from an old colleague of mine who said, Kathleen, I love everything you're doing, really exciting about time, but let me tell you, it's not so easy to get into all these grant programs that you're talking about. For the average farmer, it's a nightmare. And certainly, I know that having uh, survived some of those grant programs in my days at Tufts University, getting through to the other end and being successful is a hard thing to do. And one of the things the secretary has charged me to do is to develop this concept of a virtual university where we have the national you know, we have Annapolis for the Navy, and we have, you know, a lot of our military, we grow up people. It's like, why can't we have a virtual academy at USDA and start growing a workforce that represents the demographics of this country, who are the best and the brightest, who will take over when all of us with gray hair go away. So with that, thank you very much. Today on Meet the Farmer TV, we have seen all sorts of things from NRCS, the United States Department of Agriculture, Cooperative Extension, efforts to make farming viable here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. 
Well, there you have it, another episode of Meet the Farmer TV.